If you are visiting for the first time, we would love to give you a gateway welcome. And we would really like to invite you to share lunch with us after the service. We have our monthly banquet table on today. So we'd love to see you there to come and have lunch and just um, join in fellowship with each other. So please stay. It would be lovely to have you. Um, yes, so banquet table we have everybody afterwards. We'd just love some help with the tables, um, wheeling them out um, after the service. And also... For those of you who are staying for lunch, we'd love some help with packing up afterwards because we have a massive day in the kingdom today because not only do we have the banquet table, we are also going to Kingdom Life for our city celebration and that starts at 4pm to 6pm. That is over at Clavelli Park and that is for a night of worship and a focus on equipping and training leaders. Guys, if everyone just can listen, that would be great. Thank you. Um, so that's Kingdom Life at 4 to 6 p.m. Like, So we have service, we have lunch, then we go and have another time at Kingdom Life and then we have another celebration there and that will be amazing. And you're all invited and it, it's just so good. I love this life we live. Um, we had the very, very great privilege... Tony Rogers, how are you? Hi, Tony. <laughs> Good to see you. We have the amazing privilege of having Jim and Maria Nestoris with us from Lighthouse Christian Church. Not only that, we have Zoe, Mariah, Isaac and Joanna with us. And it is so good to have you here. I'll let you share a little bit about your life. But just want to say, this is what doing the ministry with family looks like. This seriously is. Like, where you go, your kids go with you, they travel, they see the world, they see the impact that you are having on churches, on nations, and, um, yeah, it's just beautiful to see you. We go back um, way, way. We met in 2007 and have just had a beautiful friendship with them, and um, it's just, honestly, it's such a joy to have you guys here. So thank you for coming. It's really beautiful. Prayer and worship is here on at 7 p.m. this Wednesday night. Inspirecraft, Tash, are you here yet? Yes, you are. And um, Inspirecraft will be at Tash's, and um, it'll be on the first of each month. Sorry, together on the first of each month. It doesn't say the first of what on each month. First Wednesday of each month. And there'll be some morning tea and bring along your choice of craft. And that also is a wonderful time of fellowship. But while you are there, we have got a very special birthday today. Happy birthday, Anya. <laughs> Hope you have an amazing day today, Anya. So good to have you here. And Arise. Last Arise was absolutely amazing. It was just the most beautiful, beautiful time of building up, encouraging, edifying. Um, ladies, I really, really encourage you all to get there. Like, it is just um, so beautiful be to be in the midst of each other and just listen to what God's doing. Steph seeks, you know, the Father's heart for what it is that um, he wants her to bring, and it is just beautiful. You don't have to bring anything except an open heart. Um, you are fed, you are loved on, you are encouraged, and it's just beautiful. So that will be here this Saturday morning coming up, 9 to 11 a.m. So, yeah, I just encourage you to come. Now, Johan and Amy, can you just come up, please? <clears throat> Give them a round of applause. I have just got your name, so clearly you must have something that you would like to share. So I'm going to give this, and whoever would like to speak. Sure. Thank you. Well, first of all, hello, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> it's been a minute. Um, well, yeah, we kind of have some, I mean, I guess it's exciting news. Uh, so Thursday, someone got down on one knee, not to uh, tie a shoe, but to get proposed to. <laughs> Um, 
Thank you. Thank you. So we're both uh, very, very excited for this new season uh, and for what God has in store uh, for the both of us. And it's been a journey together the past two years. And if you know our story longer than... Um, Anyway, that's a side story. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, we're both very, very excited and have the support of both our families. Um, and yeah, I just also wanted to share with Gateway family because you guys have all seen me grow up uh, throughout the years and become uh, more bold with God. Um, so yeah, and that's me done. <laughs> <laughs> And then just to add to all the excitement, um, I'm also relocating for work relatively soon, which is really cool. Uh, I think that adds a lot of excitement to the next couple of months. Um, a couple of little challenges to figure out too, but we'll get through all that sort of stuff together. Um, but yeah, so we just well, wanted to share all the news with you guys as Amy's church family and um, becoming my church family too, uh, just to let you guys know that that's, that's where we're at and that's what our situation is um, Yeah, in the near future. So, Johan will be re lo relocating to New South Wales for his job, and so they will be doing long distance for a while until obviously other events happen. Um, so, it would just be great this morning because um, he's going to be leaving relatively very soon, so this will probably be the last time that you see maybe both of them for um, just for a little while. So, if you just want to stretch out your hands... And we are just going to pray for them, like Dave and Heather and Mark and Michael and Bree. Uh, Michael, that's fine. Bree, if you want to come up. Father, we just truly, truly thank you for the blessing that you have for Johan and Amy. And we bless them in this next exciting season. We thank you that you have already gone before them, that you have already made the way. We thank you for favour with Johan's work. We thank you for travelling mercies and we thank you, Lord, that you have opened doors and the doors that you have opened and they have prayed about it, they have sought you and they see this as your yes and they are going on your yes and you will totally bless them. So we thank you for everything that you have prepared in advance for them, for the joy, for the excitement, for every, every detail as they plan their wedding and things like that. So I thank you, Lord, that absence really does make the heart grow fonder. And in this time where they are going to be apart physically, Lord, I know that you're going to do a deeper work in them spiritually. And so we thank you for that. So we thank you for Johan and Amy, and we just pray your blessing upon them in your mighty and precious name, Jesus. Father, we just thank you for Johan and Amy, Lord God. We thank you for what you're calling them to. We just thank you for this new era, this new chapter in their life. We thank you that you're leading the way. I just thank you, as Donna has said, they sought you, Lord God. They didn't, it wasn't their own thoughts and imaginations that brought them this, this part and this time in their life. It's, it's you, Lord God. You've drawn them here and you've, le you've led them here. So, Lord, we're assured that they're in good hands, they're in your hands, Lord. And we just thank you for that as they make the relocation together after they get married both up to Newcastle, that even for Amy, things will just be so easy for her, Lord God, uh, that she'll be surrounded by good people, that she'll find key contacts in the city, good friends, solid, solid friendships will be established, Lord God, for both of them. And, uh, Lord, they'll keep continuing to grow in you. Uh, they'll be led in ways into what you've got for them up there, whether in, and in work, but also, Lord, in the body of Christ. And we just thank you for the, for the DNA that's been in, implanted into both of them, Lord, for Johan and his, his, from his family and, and what he's been involved in, also for Amy from this house, Lord God. We just thank you that they carry that with them. And, Lord, it's, it's, a, rich, it's a rich DNA. It's a rich DNA in you, Jesus. And we just thank you that that's going to be established where they go and implanted where they go, and it's going to add to. And uh, we just thank you for them and bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, when we stand to our feet, we're going to worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Jesus, we just thank you. We lift up your awesome name, Jesus. King of Kings, Lord of Lords, we exalt you. You are why we are here. We thank you that you're in the midst of us. We thank you for your presence, God. 
We thank you that we can come and just glorify you and honor you and magnify your great name. Jesus, we exist for you. We exist for you, Lord God, to give you all the glory, to bring you all the glory. Everything that's due you, Lord God, we want to do that. So Lord, we honor you this morning. We praise you this morning. Lord, we, we just yield ourselves to you, Lord. We yield ourselves to you. We don't want anything to hold us back. I think that we're in the throne room right now. We're in the throne room right now with you, Jesus. We're before you, we're before your face. We, wait. we just thank you for your presence, Lord God. We honor you. Lord, we just thank you. There's nothing that stops us. No shame, no condemnation, no guilt stops us from coming in to worship you and glorify you this morning as we get on our face before you and whatever it is we're going to do to honor you, we want to do that. Bless you, Lord.
called to be free. We're called to be joyful. We're called to have fun. It says the Spirit of the Lord is our strength. That's where we stand today, in the Spirit of the Lord. We are strong because He is strong. Let's have a party in Jesus' name. You ready? Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Come on. Get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Because you picked me up and turned me around and placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior. Because you healed my heart and changed my name. Forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the master, I thank the savior, I thank God. One more time, you picked me up and turn me around and place my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior. Keep it going, don't let it stop. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom for all the captives. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Declare it to yourself and to everyone else. That where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Give you all 
your glory. It's all yours. It's yours. It's yours. We'll give you all the
Just your voices. How great, how great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Trip. 
in the spirit realm throughout this region the reverberations as we proclaim you as king as we honor you and magnify your great name lord there's a shift because your name is above every other name there is no one like you can we go back into that chorus again back into this song and just sing it through and as we sing it let it be a prophetic declaration from your heart over this city over this region over this state over this nation because he is the King of kings and Lord of lords, and we proclaim him as such. Jesus, we love you. We honor you. Lord, and even as we sing that, Lord, I just thank you that I saw you enthroned. I saw you enthroned, and I saw you holding out your hand again. Lord, I just thank you for the invitation. I thank you for the invitation to come to you and to proclaim your great name, because you are worthy of it all. Lord, let's just honor you, Jesus. We honor you and honor your name over this city, over this region, Lord. Let it reverberate, not only reverberate, let it crack through. Let it just decisively cut through the spiritual demonic armies around this place. Let them be shattered into a million pieces, Lord God, as we proclaim your name. And you take the ground, Jesus. You take the ground. You take the ground this day in your mighty name.
For in you I have found my home. In your praises I will speak my will. In my truth all that you see will be made whole. When I am at the center of your world, all that surrounds me cannot withstand my presence. All that is broken will be made whole. All that has fallen will be restored. All that cries out against me will be silenced. Put me where I must be. Put me at the center of your mind. Put me at the center of your praises. Put me at the center of your very being and see all that I do. I call to you now. You have sat in silence wondering where I am. Well, here I am. I am waiting to make you whole. I am reaching out to all who would have me. Call to me, yearn for me, and I will come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm sensing there's a, a new sound being released. A new sound being released over us this morning. It's a sound of heaven. It's a sound of freedom. It's a sound of God's people being beckoned into the throne and being in awe and wonder of this great and mighty King. I just feel there's a freedom and a sound that the Lord is wanting to release that's prophesying to the nations, that's prophesying to the region. As we're singing, as we're following the cloud by day, the, the pillar of fire by night, for the Lord's going to release freedom. Even at our meeting this morning, I'm going to read Psalm 149. It says, Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. He's praising the assembly of His faithful people. Let Israel or the church rejoice in their Maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their King. Let them praise His name with dancing and make music to Him with the timbrel and the harp and the incredible drums this morning. For the Lord takes delight with His people and He crowns the humble with victory. That His faithful people rejoice in this honour and sing for joy on their beds. May the praise of their God be in their mouths, a double-edged sword in their hands to inflict vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples to bind their kings with fetters and their nobles with shackles of iron, to carry out the sentence written against them. This is the glory of all His faithful people. And I just feel as we kind of participate and partner with what the Holy Spirit is wanting to release over us and through us this morning, I feel there's a new sound, there's a new voice, there's a new boldness, there's a new confidence that's coming out of our hearts, the depths of our beings. And it's changing the very spiritual atmosphere around us. It's changing the very spiritual atmosphere. It's bringing light into darkness, hope into despair, freedom when the captives are bound. So I just want to ask the, the team just to continue to lead us in that posture of crying out before the Lord. We're not in a rush, Lord, this morning. Father, we pray and we thank you that you are here. You clearly spoke that you are here. We know that you are here. Father, we pray, reveal your presence, your glory. We seek your face today. We love you. We honor you. Come and have your way, Lord.
into the flame of God but let it just burn let me just burn white heart just burn Let your church burn again, burn again, first love fire. Oh, let it just burn. Oh, like you're breathing on the embers, let it just burn. Set it aflame, fan into flame. Sundana yende, sundara yende ya hore maki kariando. He he yanda nere he he yende reso. Yeromo so kandere ma, yo he 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 yanda nere ma, yo re ma sandere ma ya kariando re ma he 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 yando reso. O hareja na ya no alema ariako. Rusi aranda akiando ababariando karema. Risi areja na ya no ya ani karekia. Risi ka areka na no ala ani hareka sika. Horia haria ya ya ya. Horima harihusima. Ruma, 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 Sumare Bacharia, Kia, He, He, Mahar Ayondo Acarendo, Ziborro Dia, Zimborro, Si Papa Romo. Hay, 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 Ay 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 Do not I stand in the midst of my people. Do not I stand in the midst of my people. I am here, I am always here. I delight in my bride, I delight in my people, says the Lord. And there is a sound, there is a frequency, there is a victory sound today, says the Lord. Their eye may not see, and the heart not may perceive the things that I do in your midst, says the Lord. But I'm always working. I am always working. I am always working, says the Lord. Do not give up, for in due time 
I will manifest those things that is birthed today, says the Lord. For those things that are impregnated in the Spirit. And I will watch over my word to perform it. I will water my word to perform it. And I will use you, my beloved, to perform it, says the Lord. For I partner with my bride. I am one with you as you are in me. I am in you, says the Lord. Where can you hide? For my spirit is everywhere. Wherever your feet touch as my spirit goes. I ask you today, I beckon you today. Be my hands, be my feet, be my heart, says the Lord. For I am redeeming and saving a lost world. I invite you, come a little closer. respond to that word even now let's just draw in let's just draw in I had that picture earlier even on the throne with his hand extended out that invitation that invitation he always invites us into more he's always more let him draw you in even now let him draw you in closer let him draw you in more intimately let him draw you in Thank you, God, for everything you've done this morning so far. Even as we move to this next part, we just thank you that it's still worshipping you, still glorifying you, still exalting you. Lord, even before Mark sang, 
about being on fire. Even as Rob brought it before he brought his word. I thank you that I saw you with your fiery eyes of love, Lord. Looking into the hearts of each person here. I was reminded of your fiery angels that stand in your presence, Lord. And I saw them walking in our midst. I saw them walking in our midst. And I thank you. It's a promise for this house, Lord. I thank you for your goodness and your glory, Lord. We thank you that you just want to deal with all the junk that is only gold left, pure, refined gold. Thank you that you take us to Zarephath like you did with Elijah, to that smelting town, that place where your fire exists, Lord God, where everything else gets dealt with and we come out in your glory and your presence, God, to deal with the things you're calling us to deal with in this hour. Lord, we just thank you for this morning. We honor you. We give you all the glory. We just thank you for the mores of you, Lord God. There's always more. There's always more. So, Lord, we're not going to sit down at this moment and go, that's it, I'm done. No, 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 there's more. There's more. The Lord wants to give you more. There's more, there's more, there's more. So receive the whole day and be fed by him this day as you sit at his banquet table before we go into our own banquet in the physical realm. Thank you, guys. Thanks to the music team. Bless you guys. If we could take up the, um, the generous giving quickly while get Jim ready, that would be great. Lord, we just thank you, God. Thank you for the ability to be able to give generously, Lord God. With the gifts and attributes you've given us, the skill sets you've given us. Lord, you've given us everything we need, Lord, to create wealth in this city, in this town, in this nation. And we just thank you, Lord God, that it all comes from you. It was all planned by you. It's all for you. It's all to your glory. So I ask you to bless the hands, Lord God, and everyone in the house for what they've given and how they contribute generously to everything of your kingdom and your kingdom advancing. And so, Lord, bless them, God. Pour out your favor and your grace upon them. Give them success in everything they put their hands to, Lord God. May they flourish this week in absolutely every single way. May there be unusual favor upon them, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jimmy, please come up. Jim's, um, Jim and Maria, as Donna said earlier, have been friends of ours for, since 2007. I count that back, 15, 17 years, something like that. And uh, 
we want you to welcome them like we would welcome them and honour them like we would honour them. They're a blessing. Um, again, even this is, this is what it looks like to be partnering with NCMI. We're not coming under anything. We're, we're not coming under anything, absolutely. And we've got the freedom to be who we're called to be. And I just want to assure you all that. But this is what it's going to look like uh, when we have gifts come into the house who, who want to impart uh, what God's given them for us, that we get fed and then we get to hear what God's saying to this place. He, uh, I'll let him go for it. His word for this house. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it feels like we've just stepped into family. We, uh, we love that time of worship. Such a beautiful, sweet time in the presence of the Lord. And to the worship team, well done. And uh, we enjoyed it. And the Lord spoke to us. The gift, such evidence of life and just a spirit moving. So good on you. Keep, can I encourage you to keep plowing that field? Yeah, keep sowing into the spirit. You know, there's a hunger across, before I get into some formalities, there's a hunger across this great south land of the Holy Spirit, God's drawing and raising up a generation of nameless and fameless, nameless and faceless, generation of people who just love Jesus, who love the presence of God, who are laying aside the formulas, the, the growth, the, all these things that we get taught, and not that they're all wrong, but... God, you know, God's not into formulas, yeah? It's not do one song, then he comes. Do that song specifically, then he comes. God is so original. We know that, right? He's so creative. Just when we think we've come to understand God, he does something new. And he does that on purpose so we can passionately pursue him with our love and devotion. Because if we get stuck in the same old rut... And if we get stuck in the same old doing stuff, how many of you know we can just turn up, press a button, and we think we've got the kingdom, and God cannot be mocked. And God will never share His glory with anyone. But He's, upon a, he's breathing life upon a people. And we see it across the churches. We have the privilege of partnering across our land and people coming in from across the globe. They're saying God is doing something significant in the great south land of the Holy Spirit. There's something unique that's going on here. It's the move of the Spirit. It's the hunger for worship. It's the hunger for the presence of God, to pursue His face, to seek Him, and to lay our agendas aside, to lay our programs aside. And, you know, to be honest, whoever decided that it's three fast songs, one slow song, or... 20 minute preach and and then we the kingdom's come. No, that makes me sick to the core. <laughs> so I'm glad we've stepped into something and well done to the eldership team. Because I know it's it's not easy to pioneer something that God wants to do. Because there's pressure on churches to have to conform to a certain agenda, a certain mindset. And people come and people want to, you know, church to have in their own way, their own way. Anyway, to cut a long story, well done. Well done. Well done, well done, well done. And our reward isn't necessarily here on earth. It's we get to experience the kingdom coming to earth. Does, does that make sense? Yeah? Anyway, that's just for free. It's not part of my preach, so don't start your clocks yet, okay? Mark said I can go right to one o'clock. Is that all right? Is it? Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> no, awesome. So my beautiful family here on the left. So Maria, my wife, why don't you stand? 26 years married. And she still wants to stay married with me. It's a miracle. Amazing. And my four beautiful kids, one's at home. The eldest, Zoe, that's here. Stand up, Zoe. Mariah, Joanna, and Isaac. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, we, uh, we love doing life together, but we love serving the Lord together. Amen. There's something about God's doing something generationally. It's not just this present generation. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. There's this generation serving God together. And we feel that God's restoring that back to the church. Uh, and it's not, God's not into just young church. God's into... Family, amen? It's young and old, rich and poor, 
successful and out of work, happy, depressed. If you're depressed, we, we can do something about it today, so don't leave. But I'm trying to say we're, we're here, we're in it together, and the, the church should reflect the kingdom, which is a multi-generational, different people from different walks of life. But they've caught something of the heart of the king. And we, we, we do life together, we serve the Lord together, and it carries through. Does that make sense? Yeah? So today I want to just talk very briefly, because I know the, the smell of the food's going to distract you, <laughs> as it will me. <laughs> very, thank you. Very briefly, on we, I feel the Lord's put a message on my heart for Gateway, and it's having faith for breakthrough. And you recognizing that we're, we're facing a season that, that God needs to break through in some things for us, on our behalf, for our city, for our nation. And let's feel stirred into 2024. And our God's not in the calendar years and He works in seasons and all those kind of things. But for us specifically at home, and I feel for us here at, at, at the church at Gateway, that God wants to deposit something of His bigness, of the infinite power and grace and love and mercy. That'll change you today. That'll stretch you today. That even might make you feel a little bit uncomfortable, but my job as a preacher not to make you feel comfortable. There's many clubs to do that around our beautiful nation. I'm not here to make you hate me as well, so an amen every now and then would be very good. Thank you. But I feel my, my role, our role here as we work in tandem with the eldership team and our role isn't to usurp or bypass the highest human government here for the, for the gateway is the eldership team. So we're not here to kind of say now they're wrong, we're right or do that. You know, we're here to just come alongside them and say, hey, keep doing what you're doing. Keep pointing your people to Jesus, but also just to bring a little bit of perspective. How many know we all need perspective? We all need people around us who trust us, who we trust and they trust us and you can speak into our life to help us grow and mature and become all that God has called us to be. So faithful breakthroughs. So before I do that, I just want to just prophesy over Gateway. Is it okay if I prophesy? See, Gateway existed in the heart of God even before Gateway ever existed. And you've got to believe that about your church. That we're not just some random people gathering for some random purpose. That God's preordained purpose and destiny, way before Gateway started, was for Gateway to exist. And not just exist as in occupy, exist as in take this city for Jesus. Amen. <laughs> and Jesus in the book of Revelations picture that he walks among the lampstands. And if you read about church history and a little bit about typology, is that every local church, I believe, is a lampstand. And lampstands exist not for the church. They exist for their city. They exist for their region. And I feel, just to encourage you, that gateway has been established. And no man or no person can usurp what God has started. Because it didn't start in the heart of man, it started in the heart of God. And part of that, the, the prophetic utterance I feel for, for Gateway is, I hear these words, innovation, pioneering, and breakthrough. That God's going to show you there's, there's a sense of creativity upon this church, innovation, pioneering, that's going to result in a breakthrough into your region, into your city, and into the nation. I feel the Lord's going to unlock new ways, strategies, Outreach methods to love on your uh, community. He's going to create ways where you can communicate the simplicity of the gospel in a, in a powerful, supernatural way. It's going to touch many lives. I believe some of these ways uh, are going to be old wells. They're going to be redug. They're going to be almost like when P uh, Jesus says to Peter, Go and throw your net out. And Peter says to Jesus, Lord, we've fished all night. We've caught nothing. But at your word, Lord, we're going to go and throw the nets out. And there's going to be moments in your, in your future as gateway where, Lord, we've tried that before. It hasn't worked. But, Lord, at your word, we're going to redig some of those old, well, old wells. 
because God's prophetic destiny for, for Gateway doesn't change, will never change, because God doesn't change. Doesn't matter who's leading Gateway, can I be honest? Because if we make it about a couple or a personality or anointing, we've lost the fight already. That God's purposes are beyond the generations, beyond human instrumentality. But He works through a generation of people who have caught the heart of Jesus and say, Lord, we are here for you. We're all in. And to be honest, as a family, we've been all in from day one. I don't know about you, but we, we, when I got saved, I didn't hold anything back from the Lord. Because I knew where I was going. I knew what kind of person I was. I knew what the Lord saved me out of. And when I got saved, I said, Lord, whatever I have, whatever I do, I'm all in for your kingdom. And that was 27 years ago. And praise the Lord, He's kept that passion and fervor in our hearts and we're not going to look back. And we're creating a way. We're preparing the way for generations to follow behind us. And not only... Come where we've gone, but go further than us. Can you say amen? amen? So my encouragement for Gateway, keep doing what you're doing. I feel the Lord's going to give clarity and discernment to the eldership team, headed up by Mark and Donna. Clarity and discernment. It's almost like, have you ever had your eyes tested at the optometrist, yeah? And they put these funny looking things on you, these lenses, and they say to you, can you see? And maybe the first time you can see, but it's a bit not clear. And then they keep flicking the lenses, and finally you can see, and then that's clear. That's the kind of lens I want. And I feel that's what's going to happen with you guys. There's been clarity, there's been vision, but God's going to intensify that. He's going to make it way clearer for you. That you're not going to be left guessing, God, is this the way we should go? That's going to be so clear. Lord, you've spoken. This is the direction. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Can you say Amen. And I really feel that for you guys. And can I just throw it out there that uh, I might not ever get invited back, which is cool, so it's not. <laughs> but you are all invited to come to Sydney and visit us. And it should be the way in the kingdom. I mean, there's a big bridge from Gateway to Lighthouse. Our church we lead is called Lighthouse. It goes 1,500 kilometers, but it's a massive bridge in the kingdom. And you're welcome anytime to come. And I feel there's something about, yes, we're friends and I love our journey, but we have a future together, whatever that looks like. I'm not trying to make anything happen. But this is strategic where, where churches are like-hearted, like-minded, and we worship God. We want to see the same things happen. We, we come alongside and we encourage each other. We speak into each other's lives. We minister in different contexts, and then we trust the Lord for breakthrough. Can you say amen? amen. Are we good? Yeah. All right. Um, if you've got any more questions about it, we have a, a history. We lived in the U.S., been on different eldership teams. We love to chat through. Um, I don't want to do it now because I'm going to cut into my, my time. But we're going to be around for lunch, and you can come and check us out anytime. Mark and, and Donna got our details. We love Gateway, and we're so blessed to be here. And we, we, we're praying it's, it's the beginning of our journeys together into the future. Um, are we good? Yeah. And just quietly, we love Adelaide. Yeah? Oh, man. We can move here tomorrow. We're thinking, man, this is a beautiful city and beautiful people. And, and man, we can come. Anyway, we'll see what the Lord does. Amen. We love Sydney as well, but anyway. Um, okay, let's move. If you've got a Bible with you, let's turn to Hebrews chapter 12. Um, and I really won't talk too long, but I just want to share something of my heart this morning. And it's this thought of, of faithful breakthrough, but specifically as we recognize and run to Jesus. See, breakthrough comes when we do something. Breakthrough is not going to come to us just as we watch TV and watch Netflix and kind of just go through life and we don't do something. You know, God's not this magic genie that we rub and we get three wishes every Sunday and we go back and we do it. That's, that, that's not it. God wants to partner with us. And the way uh, he partners with us is we recognize and run to him. Breakthrough comes. And the whole Bible's filled with stories of men and women who recognized who God was and ran to him, and breakthrough came. 
can I encourage you. Gateway Church, recognize who God is, what He's doing by His Spirit, and run toward Him. Run toward what He's doing. Sometimes we ask the question, God, what's your will for my life? Have you ever asked that question? And it's good and it's, it's right, but it's incomplete. I think the question we need to ask, especially with churches and even personally, is not, God, what's your will for my life? Is God, what are you doing in my life, in the, my church, in my family? What are you doing? And how does my life come into track with what you're doing? That's, I think, a bit of a more accurate question, yeah? Anyway, so we're going to faithful breakthrough, Hebrews 12, verse 1 to 2. One of my favorite scriptures. Let's read it together. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. I'm not sure what translation you guys read, but that's good. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Did you see that? Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you do not grow weary and lose heart. You see, the context there is uh, Hebrews 10. It starts with, at the end of the chapter there, God doesn't want us to shrink back. And we know Jesus is coming back very soon. And we believe very, 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 very soon. (laughs) We're all right, yeah? (laughs) I mean, Paul said he's coming back soon, so we, we cannot be wrong to agree with Paul. And if we look at the world, we, we can live in despair and discouragement, yeah? We look at, wow, the wo- world's falling apart. And let me encourage you, the world's not falling apart. It's falling into place for the return of the King. Can you say amen? And part of our role as a church is to prepare for, for our King to return. It's to live ready. Now, I don't know if you, people get caught up in pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, and element of P-trib, and all the other tribs and all that stuff. And I'm not mocking and saying, no one knows, okay? <laughs> so stop pretending we know when Jesus is coming. We don't know exactly when He's coming, but we do, and we should all agree that Jesus is coming back. And because we believe that, we should live different. That's the context where in Hebrews 10 it says, we do, we're not like those who shrink back and are destroyed. But with those who have faith, and persevere and are saved. Can you say amen? amen? And Jesus is looking for a church that's full of faith. Full of courage. Full of love. Full of compassion. No matter what's coming down the pipeline. No matter what's thrown at us. What new thing comes. Lord, we're ready. No matter what comes. Jesus, we're not going to shrink back. We're here for you. Can you say amen? And I believe there's a, there's a fresh call for courage to come back to the church. The church somehow has lost a bit of its backbone. And we replaced it with wishbone. I wish life was easier. I wish my pastor was better. I wish we had better facilities. I wish, I wish, I wish. No, stop wishing and start living for Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hebrews 12, let us recognize and run to Jesus. In this season, can I encourage you? Whatever's distracting you, puff your focus of Jesus. Let's be ruthless with it, as the writer of Hebrews encourages. Let's throw it off. That's a violent word. In the Greek, it's it's like on purpose and intentional, getting rid of it. Not just letting it hang around and tolerating. You know, what you tolerate ends up dominating you. Those little foxes come in and spoil the vine. So we're going to be ruthless with anything that distracts us. Good things, family things, not so good things, other things that want to come and distract us. We need to be ruthless and say, Jesus, I want my heart to be pure for you, devoted solely to you, and throw it off in this season. Can you say amen? I believe there's a two-pronged attack against the, the church, not the world. The world is just in 
mess. It needs help. That's where we're here. To bring truth and love to the world. But against the church, James talks about do not be deceived. James 1.16. He says, Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights in whom there is no variation of shadow or turning. In other words, there's a deception on the church against the character of God. We buy into lies our media and our world throws at us about God. And we buy, I'm not talking about the world, the church. We buy into that God's not good and you never know what God's going to do. And maybe God will heal you, maybe God will save you. depends what kind of life you live. And there's a deception against the character of God. And God wants to restore that by us living in the truth of who God is. Our God's a good God, full of compassion. Our God's a just God. He, he defends the widow and the poor. Our God's a forgiving God, a merciful God. And the world is watching for the church to reflect who God really is. Amen. It's a whole different message on its own. Next, there's a, there's a bewitching that's come upon the church. Paul talks about it in Galatians. You foolish Galatians. And Paul was a very secure preacher to call the church that he planted and he had apostolic oversight over you foolish Galatians. I mean, that's not, not the way to win friends and influence people. <laughs> Coming into a congregation, you foolish lighthouse people. What's wrong with you? But he was serious about this thing because he recognized something of a bewitching spirit that wanted to come in and rob the church of its freedom because it lost sight of the finished work of Jesus. Let me tell you, there's pressure on every church to make every service about everything else except about Jesus. It suddenly wants to creep into its, our way into our prayer meetings, into our leaders' meetings, into our elders' meetings, in our gatherings, that surely we just move on from the cross. Surely the cross is just for immature or new Christians that have come to the faith. We need to get into the deep things of God. And I tell you, it doesn't get any more deeper than the cross of Jesus Christ. And the church needs to stay on preaching about the cross and the resurrection. Not just the cross, not just death to self. Yes, keep preaching death, but there's a resurrection. Amen. We die to self so we can live in the newness of life. Can you say Amen. And let me tell you, the Holy Spirit falls and empowers a people who live in the truth and the character of who God is and live in the truth and the reality of the finished work of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is free to work amongst those kind of people because the Holy Spirit cannot work where there's deception and lies. So I encourage you. How many of you want to see the Holy Spirit move in our city, in our gatherings Raising the dead, healing the sick. Come on. Outpourings, manifestations of His glory. Come on, we ain't seen nothing yet. But we don't focus on those things. We focus on who Jesus is, what He's done, and the character of God. And the Holy Spirit moves, moves. The Holy Spirit does His thing as we do our thing. What's our thing? Keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen. Is this all right, Mark? Good, good, okay. How many of you like motorbike riding? Only a few people, okay. So, <laughs> we're in Denver, where we used to live, you could ride a motorbike with no helmet. It's crazy, it just felt so wrong. But you could do it. You see people in big Harleys and just hair everywhere. Or well, no hair, big beards everywhere. Anyway, it's, it look, it's crazy. The point is this, first thing they teach you about motorbike riding is look where you want to go. In other words, when you're taking a turn, don't do these things, and you're turning and you're looking where you are because you're going to fall. When you're turning, you foot on the, you th throttle on, you're looking into the, the turn you want to make. Now, why is that important? Because you're always going to hit where you're looking. Can I encourage you. Circumstances in your life are not greater than God. What you're going through right now is not bigger than God. 
no matter what it is you're facing. You might say, Jim, you don't know what I'm facing. True, I don't know what you're facing, but God knows exactly what you're facing. And his word to you today, if I can look you straight in the face and the eyes and say, your circumstances are no match for God. Our problem is that we focus on our circumstances. So they become bigger in our mind than who God is. I encourage you, take your eyes off your circumstances. Even just for five seconds, you'll be amazed and put your gaze on back onto the Lord. And you want to negotiate some of these turns that you're facing, these windy roads, decisions you need to make. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He will lead you safely into his arms. Can you say amen? I believe the way forward for us is as we recognize and run, we have an exalted view of Jesus. See, some of us, I believe, and I've been victim of this, is that our image or picture of Jesus is too small in our hearts. We see him riding side saddle on the donkey with Hosanna and all people write Hosanna to the... Can I say that's not Jesus anymore? Now, he did that, and it's true what he did. He came, ride, read, <laughs> rode... <laughs> so we get it right. I need a coffee. Rode, <laughs> rode on a donkey in. He was a meek, mild, full of power, fully man, fully God. Let me say, that's not our Jesus anymore. Our Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Can you say Amen. The victorious king. Who John, whose closest friend and mate, who was so comfortable with Jesus, was resting his head on his bosom. That's how close they were. But when John the apostle saw the risen king, he fell as though dead before him. Such was the power and the glory of our king. Can I ask us, church, can we be Wowed by our exalted view of Jesus again. When's the last time you were reading the Gospels or reading some of the letters or Old Testament and you just had to stop reading and just bow your heart before our King? Say, you're glorious, Jesus. There's no one like you, Jesus. You know, that's what happened to Isaiah. We know the story of Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6. And King Uzziah died. He was a great king and Israel's hope was linked into that king where he died. And in that place of despair, in that place of discouragement, can I prophesy of us this morning, in our places of despair and discouragement, the same thing that worked for Isaiah will work for you. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. Can I prophesy over us that God wants to encounter you, the Holy Spirit wants to reveal to you the truth of our King Jesus, high and lifted up. And the train of His robe filling the temple. You know, John referenced this scripture in Isaiah 6 in John 12, 41. And and it said about him that Isaiah said this because he saw Jesus in all His glory. (laughs) Our Jesus preceded time. You hope you know that. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. Sorry, the Word was with God. The Word was God. Our Jesus was there at the beginning, creator, sustainer of all things. And it's like Isaiah went through this time warp and he saw Jesus as a man fully resurrected in his glory, Isaiah 6. And he he had a back to the future moment, if you know what I mean. It was like Marty McFly, you know, back to the future. And he saw Jesus in all his glory before Jesus was even born as a man. But this encounter into the heavenlies and the high places of of the kingdom of heaven shaped Isaiah. He was a man who was mean and ruthless. And when he saw Jesus, we know the story here. His lips got purged. He's symbolic of the sins being forgiven. And he rose out of that place, no longer blaming society, no longer blaming his nation. Lord, here I am, a man of unclean lips. 
Here I am, Lord. Send me. And this great commission gripped him because he encountered Jesus. Let me encourage you. Your life has purpose when you see Jesus. Your life has meaning. Your pain, the struggle you're going through, only finds meaning when you see Jesus. And we can sit through, and I can, I can tell you some horror stories about our life. We had situations where we had no food, honestly. We were living in Denver, running a cafe. The, Denver, the cafe was bum bum, and we had no money, and we got five mouths, and two we were wanting to feed, and we used all our resources. Anyway, I just want to give you a reality that it's not just tip throw through the tulips of life and everything's going to be good. There's some challenges we've got to face. But in the challenges, God is there for us and He wants to lift us up as we look at Him afresh. Am I talking too fast? Okay, good, good. <laughs> I say to my church, when you listen back, just reduce it to one speed or... Half speed. Anyway, okay, a couple of practical things and we're going to be done. I believe part of us seeing Jesus risen and resurrected and exalted is that we need to come to terms with the own, our own unbelief in our hearts. See, too long the church, I think, has tolerated unbelief and we want to counsel people out of unbelief and we want to cushion people, we want to make people feel all comfortable, but they're in unbelief. And the writer of Hebrews says, depart from an evil heart of unbelief. So why would we want people to entertain unbelief when it's, when it's evil? And, I, and I'm a pastor. I'm not here to call out. I'm not here to break anyone. I'm not here to change anyone. But we need to be truthful with people. And people won't come in a breakthrough if, you don't rec- if they don't recognize there's unbelief in their heart. And we can make excuses. We can blame everyone we want to blame. But are you t- until you take responsibility for the unbelief in your own heart, you will not see the breakthrough. Sometimes we're more nicer than Jesus. And Jesus called out unbelief all the time, even amongst his team. There's a story in Mark 16 where Jesus has been resurrected, not yet glorified, but he's resurrected. And he comes into a gathering. Remember the story when they're in the upper room before the Holy Spirit comes. He comes to the gathering. And the first thing Jesus did was not pray for his team, not give him a hug, not have a coffee. <laughs> he says he got together with them, if you read at Mark 16, and he rebuked them for their unbelief. Why? Because nothing in your Christian life will work if your heart has got unbelief. Faith and unbelief cannot mix. So similar to this quiet response I'm getting at the moment happened to our church because we don't want to be confronted with the truth that the problem actually might be in our own heart. We've always been taught some, it's someone else's problem. It's your pastor, it's your church, it's that YouTube preacher you watch, it's the, your pet canary that died you know, when you were six months old. Well, you know, I don't want to be mean, just truth, well, yeah? But no one ever told me actually... Maybe the reason I'm not getting breakthroughs is because I've got no faith in my heart. Yes, we're believers. We believe Jesus is our Savior. Let me know you can believe Jesus is your Savior, but have undeveloped faith in other areas of your life. Do you want to do a quick test to, to recognize whether your heart's in unbelief or not? Yeah? Quick test. Number one, proof that your heart is in unbelief is that you've lost your joy. (laughs) I've yet to find a happy unbeliever. And joy is not happiness. You get the point, though. There's a a joy that comes upon someone's heart when it's full of faith. And no matter what you face, faith expressed in joy is your strength you're going to overcome. Quick test, has life become too hard for you? Your marriage too hard, your work too hard, you lost your joy. David prayed, Lord, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Ask the Lord, Lord, where have I lost my joy? He'll show you. 
We know Romans 14 is the kingdom of heaven. It's not a matter of eating or drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God. <laughs> and there's a, there's a thread between faith and joy. I, don't really, I can't really fully explain it, but I know it's very intrinsically linked together. When you're full of faith, you're full of joy. Because when you're full of faith, you're conscious of God. You're aware of Him and His promises. When you're not full of faith, you're conscious of self. You're full of flesh. You're full of doubt. You're full of uncertainty. Well, if your heart's full of doubt and uncertainty, there's no way you'll ever have joy. Our joy is in the Lord, not in our circumstances. I encourage you. Find joy in the Lord. Number two, out of that place, you stop praising and worshipping God. When you stop adoring God, and not just what we did here in the morning, that is part of praise and worship, but it's not the complete picture. <laughs> it's part of our worship to the Lord, but so is obedience. So is lying on your bed and being thankful to the Lord. So is getting up in the morning and being thankful to the Lord. That's part of your praise and worship lifestyle. What happens when you lose your faith, lose your, what did I say? When you're in unbelief, you stop thanking God. In actual fact, you start blaming God. That's very dangerous. <laughs> I love the story of Adam in, in the garden, right? Adam, perfect man. God takes his rib out, creates a perfect woman. They're in love and they're serving the Lord and it's full of glory. And then we know the story, sin enters, Satan deceives Adam. Adam was deceived. Adam partook of the fruit. Adam disobeyed God. Had nothing to do with Eve. All the ladies should have said amen, but anyway, you missed your chance. <laughs> and the first thing that Adam does is blame God for his wife and blame his wife for eating, giving him the fruit. Instead of thanking God, he blamed God. So let me ask you, check your heart. Are you blaming others for the condition of your heart? Because it's not their fault. It's your fault. Turn to the person next to you and say, it's your fault. <laughs> All right, maybe it's Mark's fault, but that's it, okay? <laughs> All right, we're almost done. Almost done. Number three test. How are we going so far? All right. Number three is you lack perseverance and patience to endure. When you're in unbelief, everything becomes too hard. And we've got a reputation as Aussies around the globe that our favorite saying is too hard. It's too hard, mate. Have you heard that before? We, don't want to, we want to stop saying it's too hard, right? We want to say, it's too easy, Lord. Come on. We want to say, for your glory, mate. For your glory, Lord. What happens is when we, in unbelief, just everything becomes tough. We lose the faith and God component of our lives. Everything just becomes natural. Hebrews 6 says, We don't want you to be, become lazy, but to imitate those who faith and patience inherit what's been promised. So we love the faith bit. Sometimes we learn about the patience bit. But faith and patience have to work together so we can inherit the promise. Can you say amen? So we lose faith we, in unbelief we stop persevering. We stop persevering and then we short circuit the promise of God of our lives. Can you say amen? We don't want to do that, yeah? So we've covered a few of the negatives. Now we're going to finish with some positives, yeah? Recognize and run. We want to run with fire for the Lord. Can you say amen? We want to run with this unquenchable flame, the same faith and, and fire of the Holy Spirit that was on the early church in the book of Acts is on us, is on you as gateway. We don't have a different faith, a different Holy Spirit fire. We have the same fire. And because we have the same faith, same fire, same Holy Spirit, God in us wants to produce the same thing here in gateway and beyond. So I just want to 
cover just one scripture in, uh, in Mark chapter 5, and we're going to wrap up. Are we good? Can you give me five more minutes? Five more minutes? Put your hand up and give me five more minutes. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. All right, I've got a couple of hours, so we're doing good. Bro, it works for me. Mark chapter 5, full reference, I won't have time to read it, but it's verse 35 to 43. I like to use it as a bit of a case study, and it's, it's talking about a few different things here. It's talking about uh, Jairus' daughter who had died, and at the same time, um, a lady who had reached out to Jesus for a miracle. There's a story. So read it in your own time. But what we learn out of this is sometimes when we follow Jesus, we face with setbacks. See, Jarius had asked the Lord, Lord, can you come to our house? And the Lord said, yes, he was on his way. Now, on his way with Jesus, Jarius got the worst news possible. His little daughter had just died. I mean, I can't think of anything worse than that. Now, was Jarius in the will of God? Yes. Was Jarius close to Jesus? Yes. I mean, he had Jesus right next to him. Was Jarius walking and towards his miracle? Yes. But on his way, he faced a setback. And I encourage you today, on our way, on our walk with Jesus, we're going to face some setbacks. Now, the setbacks are not there to take you out if you stay in faith. The setbacks are there to set you up for his success. God sets us up so he can have the glory in our lives. Can you say amen? amen? So don't settle for the setback. Recognize that you've been set up for success. Sometimes things can get worse before they get better. Sometimes things are out of your control. Sometimes we need to face the truth that Delays are not denials. Sometimes we lose some stuff so God can get to our heart. Can you say amen? I encourage you, whatever news you're facing today, whatever diagnosis you have, lost your job, bad report, world news coming at us constantly, I encourage you, take that setback. To Jesus. Recognize what it is. Take it straight to Jesus' feet. As we do that, next step, if you read the, the parable there, is the setbacks. We need to step up. So Jarius had received terrible news. Daughter had died. If you read the context of the story, they came to him. His servants came to him. St. Jarius, don't bother the teacher anymore. Your girl's dead. Not a very good place to be in, right? And Jesus, who's the author and the perfecter of all our faith, he made sure he got Jarius' attention. If you read the context, especially the Amplified, it comes out very strong. Jesus looked over to Jarius and locked eyes with him. And at that moment, when he got the setback, Jesus said, do not be afraid, Jarius. Only believe. See, Jesus knows how important it is when we face a setback that we need to step up so we can stay in faith because if we lose our faith, we lose everything. And some of us on the clasp, what's the word? Cusp, that's the one. I didn't want to cuss when I said cusp. And we don't know one more day of staying in faith, what would it produce for you? One more hour of faith, one more pressing through, stepping up and saying, Lord, I'm not going to be afraid any longer. No matter what bad report has come, no matter what circumstance tries to rear his head above the exalted name of Jesus. I'm going to step up and say, Jesus, I am going to believe in you. Can you say amen? amen? This is very important. 
See, the elders can't fight your battles for you. They can't. Even though, no matter how much they love you, how much they care for you, how much they pray for you, it's all needed and it's all necessary. But they cannot take your place to slay your Goliaths. You have to slay your own Goliaths. How do you do that? Well, when you face a setback, you step up and you intentionally sow your heart, you sow the Word of God into your heart to the point where you have faith. And let us very quickly, I'm going to finish with this. We think hearing God's Word produces faith. And we're wrong. We think just coming to church, hearing a preacher talk on faith, then somehow by osmosis, you're just going to get faith. It doesn't work that way. Praise God, we need some faithful preaching. Yeah? We need some good teaching. But the teaching, the preaching opens your heart so that you can hear God speak into your heart so you can obey, and that produces faith. See, faith is a verb, not just a noun. Faith is an action word. <laughs> faith comes and faith goes. Faith comes when we're here, and when we're here, it's encouraging us to step out. Actually, James says, faith without actions is dead. Let me just blow all the sacred cows out of the water this morning. And if I haven't stepped on your toes, you're probably about to feel 104 kilos of to force on your toes, okay? We need to obey, and obey, obedience is not a swear word. We need to obey God's word, and in the act of obedience, faith is released. We need to listen. Five quick points. Listen to God's word. Believe God's word. Speak God's word. Obey God's word. And share God's word. And as we do that, faith is being built up on the inside of us. I encourage you, faith is very simple. Faith is taking action on what you hear. So if we had someone come into the room, so say two groups of two different people, someone who's dressed maybe like a, someone in the circus, and they come in and they run in, and they say, dun, 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 there's a fire in the room, please leave. Dun, 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 there's a fire in the room, please leave. Now the test, whether you believe what they say, is what you do about what they've just said. Very simple. Probably 99.9 .9 of us will just continue on because we think that's not a valid message. But if a fireman wants to come in with an axe, with a helmet, with a hose around his thing, you know, face black, it burges in and says, there's a fire in the room, get out. you probably believe that guy's word, wouldn't you? What would be the test if you believed him? Sitting in your seat? No, you'd get out of here. So the proof of faith is in the action it prompts in our heart. Your faith is a living, vibrant, it's actually the spirit realm working in your spirit. It's a spiritual force. We don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. And when you feed on God's word, when you share, when you obey, faith begins to work on the inside of you. And it prompts you to do stuff. It prompts you to go to someone who's weak and pray for them. It prompts you to go to the sick and lay hands on them. It prompts you to smile to someone who's depressed and love them. Why? Because faith has a corresponding work. It prompts you to do something. Can I encourage us a gateway? Let's not just... Talk about faith. Let's prompt and encourage our people to be men and women of faith because we want to see some breakthroughs coming. Can you say amen? amen. Finish with a story. My laptop's closed. There was a lady 
that we minister to. By the way, we work into Thailand, Cambodia, and the invitation's open. I mean, I don't want to step on anyone's toes, but anyone can come to anything we're doing across the world. But we specifically have a church, uh, as a church, are working into Thailand, Cambodia, and we've seen some incredible things happen there. Miracles, buildings being built, people coming to faith, churches being planted, and we're so encouraged. But there was this lady in one of our meetings who we put a call out for healing, and she, as she was walking up to get for healing, her right shoulder started spasming, and she started doing some weird stuff. And straight out, I realized, I'm not really prophetic or discerning normally, but probably you needed to be discerning or prophetic in that moment. There was something going on beyond the natural in this, this lady's shoulder. And we put the mic before her and said, what's going on? Where's the pain? What's going on? And she said, look, every night at 3, between 3 and 4 p.m. at night, in the afternoon, this pain comes on my shoulder and doesn't leave till the next morning. And I recognize straight away it's a spirit of infirmity that's causing this upon her. Somehow she's opened the door, the spirit's come in, and it's causing this thing on her life. So we started praying for her, just in front of everyone. She stood up, we prayed, Holy Spirit hit her, and she still had lots and lots of pain in her shoulder. So we took authority over the demon. Uh, it's, it started getting looser and looser, and she shrieked and got released, and praise God, this demon left. And from that day forward, we've got reports all the time. And it's, okay, I've got to point. The point is this. Thank you for encouraging me. Thank you for the Lord. The point is this, that I believe some of us in this room, and we've had chronic conditions, we've had stuff spoken over us, long-term pain, long-term addiction, long-term curse over your family. And I just recognize something that God's doing in our family is that we're breaking curses, generational curses. We're breaking long-term chronic things. And there's something upon us that we want to see God's people free. As I wrap up this, and I'm going to hand over to, to Mark, we would love to pray for you. Not just as a family, but as a team, to lay hands, blood of Jesus, and see curses, chronic illness, Demonic pressure over your minds, your bodies, be set free. Why? Because we believe that Jesus is alive and we're going to take some action. <laughs> Jesus is here, he's alive and he wants to set you free. And we've got faith for that this morning. Amen. Thank you. I'm going to hand back over to you. You can do what you want to do. Come. Um, that, was, that was awesome, Jimmy. Thank you so much. Um, that's a great word. Look, for the, if you want to respond to that word, I, I'd ask you to come forward and our leadership team and Jimmy and, and his family will pray for you to see these things uh, broken off our lives, off your lives, and to see you set free because we all need to be set free for what the Lord's calling us to. Uh, we don't want to be people who are locked up and bound up and, and we're limping. Uh, we've spoken about this often in this place. We want to be people who are set free. Here's another opportunity for the Lord to set you free from whatever may be ailing you or holding you back or hindering you or harassing you. So if that's you, please uh, make your way forward. Um, we've got someone maybe we could have on keys. Uh, if there is, if not, that's fine. If there's no one, I just want to give you the opportunity to come forward. If you'd like to come forward, come forward now. Again, this is the, uh, the prompt of faith in your heart. You're taking an action right now and you're coming forward and the Lord is going to do His work. Amen. The Lord's going to do what he, he says He does. And again, in all these things, we just thank you, Lord, for Isaiah 53, 5, Lord. Spoken about that often recently in this place, Lord God, that you have taken all of our sin, our sickness and our diseases, Lord. You, as... as we know you've taken our sin. You've also taken all sickness, disease, harassment, everything, Lord God, that can, that can, that can stop people coming forward and into freedom in you. You've already taken that, Lord God. So what we want to see, if we can get our team up too, if the leadership team can come forward. We may need some uh, catches as well. So if there's um, someone like Phil and Ben and uh, who else? And Matt. Andrew, if you're physically good, you want to come forward? 
is going to see, these guys is going to start ministering. Thanks so much, Mark. Bless you, Dave. So, um, go. I just want to lift out those who responded at the front. Lift our hands to, to Jesus this morning. All authority in heaven on earth has been given to him. His name is above every other name. Everything you're facing, Jesus purchased for it, the, the freedom of it, took it away on the cross. He nailed it, the Father nailed it on the cross to us, His Son, Jesus. And when Jesus rose from the dead three days later, He rose with freedom, the resurrection life of God that's available for you this morning. I'm going to pray a, just a general prayer. Then the team's going to go around and just lay hands. The Bible says we lay hands on the sick. We release the anointing. We release the power of God into your mortal bodies, and it quickens your mortal bodies. Come on, I want you to have faith. The moment someone touches you, the anointing touches you. The moment someone speaks over you, that God's presence is here to set you free. It's not in the vessel. It's the anointing. It's not in the person praying. It's in the risen Jesus. So Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are here to bring truth and victory and healing. Right now, touch your people in the name of Jesus. Right now, we speak health and life and freedom and healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can you say amen with me? Amen. Hey guys, your, your job's simple this morning. You don't need to pray. You need to receive. You need to be in receiving mode, not transmitting mode. When someone prays for you, to see Jesus before you, He's giving you something. It's your healing. It's your breakthrough. It's what He's got for you this morning. So pull it in. Pull it in. Just receive it. Pull it in. Amen. So if our team can go around and start praying for people, laying hands on people, let's release the anointing, as Jimmy said, release Christ into their situation. It's Him. It's him. It's him. Jesus at work. Jesus at work. Thank you, Genders you're piercing through the familiar, you bring us back into wonder again. You speak in truth, we run it back to you. Oh, my soul, we worship you. This love of ours will rise, oh, my soul will worship you. Spirit and truth. 
Exhale is my inhale. Your very breath is what I breathe. I'm face to face with my answer in you. Lord, find me here with faith. It all has 
wants to move to obey your will. One voice, one touch of your glory, and I won't be the same. Just one touch of your glory, just one glance of your eyes, just one touch of your glory. If you haven't been prayed for, could you maybe just put your hand up? Okay. Brian, just come. If, you, if you've been prayed for, you can go back to your seat.
Father, we just thank you. We thank you for what you spoke to us through Jim. We thank you for the ministry, Lord God, that you set up from before time that happened right now for people's breakthrough. Lord, that this, there be signs, wonders, and miracles following the preaching of the word, the preaching of the gospel, Lord. And I just thank you. The truth was preached today, Lord God. I thank you for the challenge that comes from you, Lord God, to reassess ourselves again and to see where we, are, where we are in our walk of faith. We thank you for the ministry today, ministry from the music team, ministry from preaching, ministry from those who are ministering right now, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. We're just going to set up right now for the banquet. So if those who know how to move the chairs and get them in place and roll the tables out. Um, just keep this presence of the Lord. Don't sort of, we're going to have, we're going to have communion after. Uh, we're going to have communion during the banquet. So we might get those, those uh, cups and communion redistributed to the tables for each person. So no one will miss out. We just want to transition to this next part and keep worshipping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thanks, Mark. <laughs>